Welcome to the Form.Life podcast. I'm Bill Gorman, campus pastor at the Brookside campus. And I'm Paul Brandis, campus pastor at the Shawnee campus. And somehow we have reached the culmination of season three of the Form.Life podcast. It's hard to believe we've completed three seasons. This is episode 30. Um, We continue to have amazing guests join us for this conversation. Guests like Dr. Katie McCoy on women in the Old Testament, Dr. Daryl Bach on cultural engagement, um, Dr. Harold Netland on is Jesus the only way to heaven? and even Dr. John Dyer on technology. I'm just curious, Paul, as you think back on this season, what have been some of the highlights or takeaways from you? Yeah, so many. Uh, You know, I think uh, often actually about our time with uh, John Dyer on technology. I mean, just such a thoughtful theologian and thinker on this topic of technology. And I'd been reading John for a long time. His, uh, the first edition of his book, From the Garden to the City, came out all the way back in 2011. And I think I picked it up around then and uh, was impacted by the book and just he continues to be one of the, I think, leading uh, thinkers of integrating uh, thinking Christianly and engaging Christianly around theology and technology. And so, so many insights from that episode. I'd highly recommend a re-listen to it. If you uh, missed it, uh, then check it out for the first time or going back through it. Uh, But I, this broader definition of technology, because often we think about technology as, he made a joke, uh, anything that has been invented after you were born. Yeah. Or the devices in our pockets or the TVs on our walls. But really, there can be this broader uh, definition of technology around tools that help us uh, make things, different processes and ways of approaching the world and creating, creating culture and being a maker. He talked about himself as a maker. Um, He's made websites. He's made classes. He's a professor. He's made books. Uh, And so he talked about this idea of a broader view of technology from the garden all the way through scripture. So in the garden, there's even an early uh, sort of answer of technology. When the fall happens, Adam and Eve, they sin for the first time. They're experiencing the shame of that. And what do they do? They sow. Mm. They Somehow they sow. We don't know all the details, but somehow they sow for themselves clo- a, a version of a, a pitiful version of clothing yeah. out of fig leaves to cover their shame. And they ran to technology to answer some of their deepest shames and hurts and brokenness. Uh, and then he continued to weave through the biblical story, even uh, to the cross and the cross itself as technology and the nails uh, as technology that that put our, our Lord and Savior on the cross and how Jesus, as part of the triune Godhead, yeah. uh, created uh, with God the Father and with God the Spirit, and then, then is submitting himself to this broken form of human technology to die on the cross for our sins. So insights like that throughout the whole episode, it was just really incredible. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. The, again, there are so many highlights for me. One of the ones that really uh, has stuck with me and I've continued to think a lot about is when we had Dr. Daryl Bach on talking yeah. about cultural engagement and was just so helpful in thinking through how can we find common ground with our, our neighbors or even our brothers and sisters in Christ yeah. who may come at mm-hmm. uh, issues around culture, politics very differently than us. And so he gave a framework, which I thought was really helpful for when we have a, a disagreement or um, a difference of opinion with someone, whether be our neighbor who doesn't go to church or even a brother yeah. and sister in Christ to think about um, where does that category fall and how can we find common ground in that? So the categories he gave were genuine worldview clash, um, same goal, different route mm. as a second category, and the third category of competing values. And so he pointed out if you're dealing with a genuine worldview conflict, you may have to try to find common ground on something else yeah. uh, because they're just you're coming from such different starting right. points. So the examples he gave there are things like abortion or Christian sexual ethics, or if you're talking to someone who doesn't share kind of a Christian worldview on those things, it's going to be really hard to have a meaningful conversation uh, about some of those things, at least in a common ground kind of way, because your starting points are so different. But he said, actually, the things that fit into that category of genuine worldview clash are pretty small. Mm, interesting. Um, yeah. And that a lot of the other ones fit into one of the other two categories. So the idea of same goal, different route, or rather, uh, yeah, same goal, same goal, different route, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah, yeah. is that the example he gave there is like the idea of racial reconciliation. He's like, ask most people uh, anywhere if they think it's a good idea for re- racial reconciliation to happen. And people are going to say, yeah, yes. um, that's a that should, that's a good thing. So we all have the same goal. He said where the, the conflict or the disagreement comes is usually on, well, how do we get there? Mm. But if we can agree at least that we have a common goal, then it opens up a way to say, okay, well, let's talk about the different ways yeah. to do that. What are, what are strengths? What are weaknesses? How can we draw in? And then the other one is the, uh, the idea of competing values. And the, the thought there being that um, you are looking at 
different sets of values in the biblical story. Even. Yes. Um, but depending on where you put the emphasis, you get sort of different outcomes. And so the big uh, example there is immigration, right? So there's a value of, of welcoming the stranger and caring for the foreigner, all those things. But there's also clearly values in scripture on um, honoring the laws and upholding the government and, and all these kinds of uh, things as well. And so what set of values do we emphasize and how do we work together to, to hold and give those values uh, the same equal kind of weight in these conversations. So that was really helpful to me. Well, and I mean, helpful at any moment in history, right? But yeah. in 2024, absolutely uh, desperately needed to have a framework like that uh, to increase our charity and grace as we step into these contentious conversations with whoever it might be. Mm-hmm. So I know you also loved your conversation with Gabe, uh, Pastor Gabe yeah. from our downtown campus. We had a great conversation with Media yeah. about uh, this discipline of contemplation, which we yep. had been engaging through our Romans uh, season uh, in on Sunday mornings in the Form Life curriculum, and so that was just a rich conversation. If you've not heard Gabe and Nidiaris together talking about prayer and oh, contemplation, gotta um, you got to do it. We had an episode with them season on prayer two, in yeah. season, two season two as, two as, well. as well, so it's it, it's our such richness there, um, and I'm always encouraged. Absolutely. And it's also a great reminder that the Form.Life podcast doesn't exist in isolation. We That's plug right. into this much broader uh, discipleship uh, pathway that we provide for yeah. our congregation. And so we love those tie-ins uh, and linkages and also try to make those episodes evergreen as well, because there's some of it that's happening in the moment with where we're at on Sunday mornings. But we're telling you, go back to the season two episode and hear Needy Aris tell the story about her mom in prayer. Absolutely. I mean, there's just an evergreen nature to uh, that. And uh, and the season three episode was was great as well. So uh, again, if you missed that conversation or any of these that we've mentioned or any of the rest uh, from season three or season two or season one, you can scroll back through your podcast feed or visit ccc.church slash podcast to listen to any past episodes. I send that link out regularly, whether yep. to guests that we're uh, inviting to be on the show or to people that are wondering how to access it. Uh, so that's a great way to get to our podcast as well. At this point, uh, we are going to be taking just a short break from releasing new episodes, but we are not taking a short break from the work. We're already uh, working on uh, season four and uh, really, really excited about what we've got coming up. Yes. We already have some amazing guests lined up. So um, Dr. Andy Root's going to join us uh, to talk about how to live faithfully in the secular age. He's a scholar who's done incredible work on understanding what is it, what do we mean when we say secular age? What does that mean? And how do Christians uh, understand how that impacts us and how we live faithfully in the world? I'm really excited. Yeah, that word secular gets thrown around a lot. Uh, But what does it mean and how do Christians respond faithfully? Uh, We're so excited. Yeah. Uh, and then Dr. DeVale from Trinity Evangelical Divinity School will be joining us to discuss gender and how we understand that theologically and biblically. I've engaged some of his writing on this. He did his doctoral dissertation on this book. He's got a book called Gender as Love, which does a phenomenal job of both uh, really critiquing a lot of views, but then kind of holding up a biblical vision for, for gender. Um, so excited. Chris Watkin is going to join us um, all the way from Australia. So yes. he's uh, based in Australia um, to talk to us about how Christians can view culture through the lens of the grand biblical story. So yes. often we bring uh, categories of culture and sort of uh, try to make sense of culture through those, but he's arguing that we can actually use the biblical narrative from Genesis to Revelation, in many ways the four-chapter story of ought, is, can, and will that we talk about so much here at Christ Community yes. uh, and has done really deep thinking about that. So I just can't uh, wait to get to have a conversation with him and many of these others. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be amazing. I know how deeply we both have been shaped by his work and uh, just is awesome when people email us back and say they want to join us. Yes. We get really we get really excited about bringing these conversations to you. We also are going to have a really frequent guest over the last three seasons, our lead senior pastor, Tom Nelson. We've gotten to feature him on a number of different topics. And uh, the beginning of season four is actually going to be three episodes uh, where Bill and I are going to sit down uh, with Tom and the three of us are going to discuss together everybody's favorite topic in 2024. You know what it is. Politics, Politics, right? Yeah. And the first conversation, and uh, we know, right, that it's that kind of year and we want to prep well and pray well and uh, em- em- equip well as well as we can in this space. And uh, it means a lot to us to do that. And uh, we hope you'll join us for it. But the first conversation is going to look at biblical principles for understanding politics and government. What can we learn from God's word, from the Bible about this vital uh, conversation? Uh, the second uh, of our those episodes will focus on the various 
postures that Christians have taken toward politics and government, mostly probably thinking about historic postures, but even some current different postures that uh, faithful Christians may uh, take, lean in this way, lean back in that way, um, and and want to give a lot of charity to those different postures. But the third uh, episode, third conversation, uh, will suggest, humbly suggest, suggest some practices that will help us engage this fraught political moment well as followers of Jesus. So biblical principles, historic, and maybe some current postures, and then also uh, some practices, some uh, Holy Spirit-empowered practices is where, where we're headed for those episodes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really just a sampling of what's coming up uh, in the remainder of the season. We've got a lot more in yeah, store. It's and exciting. So, uh, also, just a reminder, too, you may have heard this if you listened to the episode on John Dyer, but we are going to have John Dyer yeah. with us in person in Kansas City here at Christ Community. That's on Monday, October 28th for an event on artificial intelligence, a Christian understanding of technology. So if you listen to that episode and you loved it, you're not going to want to miss this yeah. event with him here in person on October 28th. If you haven't listened to that episode, go and do that and then sign up. You Registration's open now. Yes, you is. can yeah. sign up today. So get that on your calendar. Sign up. You can go to cckc.church slash AI. Again, that's cckc.church. That's our website, slash AI, where you can find out more about that event and reserve your spot. Get signed up. Um, so do that. Go back, listen to John, and sign up for that event here in Kansas City. Yeah, have a great summer. And we're going to be back here with new episodes uh, before you know it in late July. Thank you. 